Alright, we're live here on Google Plus. Yo! We got Mike Meth. Hello! And we have Torn Thomas. What's up, everybody? And I'm Aaron Rutten, and we are three uh, world famous. Musketeers. Yeah, three world famous musketeers. You might know us <laughs> from us. We've had some adventures, some dashing tales. We're going to talk a little bit today about what we do as digital artists. And we're also going to take questions from the audience. So if you're watching today, which you aren't, because I think it says there's zero viewers, <laughs> if any of you zero people would like to ask a question, feel free to do so, and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, we have a few talking points to bring up today, and we're going to talk a little bit first about some of our recent work that we're working on. Does anybody want to go first, or should I leave it off, lead it off? I think Torin wants to go first. I didn't want to, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll accept that challenge. Uh, what have I What have I been doing lately? God knows. You know, just kind of, you know, doing things, drawing stuff. Mm. Uh, but uh, I mean, I'm I'm giving. A, I have so many things I'm, I'm I need to be doing right now. It's it's kind of insane. I decided to give away a caricature for free, just you know, to be a nice guy for once in my life. Um, working on that. I'm working on, uh, there's a new music app, uh, I don't know if it's available yet, or if it's gonna be available soon, called Rhythm, R-I-T-H-I-M, I've been doing a lot of, uh, avatars and stickers and emojis and stuff for them, that's the majority of what I've been working on for the past month or so, uh, other than that, just kinda just doing paintings for myself, uh, got a couple of other video game related Avatar, uh, you know, stuff like that. Things in the world. So cool that you do all that stuff, man. Yeah, keep you busy. Yeah, I'm sure I'm trying to, and then just uh, doing that, and then just painting for myself. Uh, I'm actually not making any money on what I'm working on right now. I'm, it's it's actually money. It's for my godson. <laughs> I've never even heard of money. Oh yeah, money is this. It's it's a fictional. It doesn't exist in my world. But, yeah, I'm just working on that right now, and then, you know, just trying to stay busy and, you know, keep it up with contracts and contacting people. Do you have anything you can show off? Uh, nope. <laughs> I don't know if, I, I can't, I don't want to show the, the rhythm stuff just in Yeah, case. yeah, some, some things you can't. Yeah, like, I, I don't know, I don't know what, what they, if they've got that stuff cleared, because, like, they're working with actual, like, these actual artists, are, uh, yeah. their record labels and stuff, and, like, I don't want to get in trouble with Nicki Minaj, because yeah. we're going to get married one day. Yeah. But that's Maybe. beside the point. But, <laughs> uh, Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, like, but I, I don't, I don't want to trip out, but I will, I will show uh, the gift I'm making for my godson. Yeah, yeah, let's check that out. Just something for fun for him. It's not always about money sometimes, you know, I think, I think if you're in it to make art, Good things are going to come your way, and money's going to come your way. You don't, you know. God, I hope so. If, 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 you're, <laughs> if, if money is your number one focus, you know that's uh, you're going to be consumed. Yeah, by that. like, that's that's why I decided to uh, uh, give away a like a entire painting. Like I'm not even doing a sketch. Like I did this little thing on Facebook. And that's where the majority of people get in contact with me. Uh, I asked them like a real simple question about myself, and you know whoever answered it. I was like, yo, you can get whatever you want. I'll paint anything you want, like, within reason. Yeah. And uh, a guy that, uh, he's actually been a big fan of mine for a while. He won it, and so I'm still talking to him right now, and we're going to figure out what he wants to do. So he's going to get a free, you know, entirely custom painting from me. And I think I'm going to do it maybe a couple of times a year, just, you know, kind of give back a little bit. Like, it's not always about trying to cash checks all the time, most of the time. But yeah. <laughs> every now and again, you know, you kind of got to do something nice for the yeah. people, and I figure that's the least I can do. Yeah, it's, it's good cool, to get man. back. Well, Mike, do but, you have something you want to share with us? Do I have things? Uh, well, I think Torrance pulling stuff up now. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, I, just, I just pulled up what I did for uh, oh, okay. my <laughs> Big Hero 6 fan. So uh, he asked Ooh, me to cool. uh, do something for him. I have it set up with him and my nephews and my other godchildren and stuff like that. Uh, we share, we trade drawings. So if they do something for me, then I'm like obligated to do something for them. So he drew me a bunch of Ninja Turtles and stuff. And it's nice. cool stuff for me in school. So, you know, I had to pay him back. 
so I've been working on this for just the past day or so, and I'm about done. And I'm probably going to awesome, present that to him framed in a couple of days here, and hopefully he'll dig it. Yeah, it turned out good. I like the color scheme in it, how the skin color is all kind of toned down a little bit, and then everything else kind of pops out around that. Yeah, I was looking at, uh, you know who Tyler Stout is? No. Tyler Stout does all these uh, custom uh, movie posters for this, I think it's a company called Mondo, but they're ridiculous. And, like, I didn't want to just, like, bite his style, but it was definitely a big influence. It's something different. Like, I, I, you know, render stuff realistically all day long. I don't do a lot of flat colors, so I figured since this is just for, like, a a seven-year-old, if I I screw it up, it's not going to be that big a deal, so I just tried it, and I think it turned out all right. Yeah, I think it looks good. Well, I appreciate it, guys. I'm getting some stuff together over here in one sec. The overlapping of the logo is nice, too. It kind of... I like I like to see a lot of distance and depth in pieces when there's overlapping layers. That's what I was going for. I was trying to, like, you know, just kind of get some rhythm and... You know, I get so caught up in the, the, the rendering and making everything look how I want it to look that I think sometimes I skip over, like, the design principles of everything. And you know how stuff flows on the page and the composition and just all that other little stuff. So I tried to, you know, take this as an opportunity, and not only just to you know give a gift to a kid, but actually maybe try to like practice some stuff and learn something from it. I think we accomplished that somewhat. And it's I think cool. it came together really well. I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah. It's cool drawing Disney robots too. I mean that's always fun. All right, we uh. Pull some stuff together. So me, my things. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Let's check it out. Oh geez. Um. Okay. Screen share. Screen share. Um. So this is my. Aaron, did I lose you? Uh oh. Everybody here? I'm still here. I think we lost Aaron. And he's Sorry. I'm back. back. Yeah. Oh, I'm that's having some. Well, a little thing that I I learned when I was doing a like a hangout class, and I had a mini meltdown. Even if everybody drops out, the thing is going to keep going until, Aaron, like, you come in and hit stop the broadcast. So yeah. Yeah. It's be my... Anyway, um, yeah. so this is one that I just finished of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, for today. Today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um... I actually, I've been in a, a massive art funk for the past, like, month or so. So this is the first thing that I've done in a while, trying to snap myself out of it. And I'll, I'll comment more on that later. Um, but what I did with here, you know, I'm always trying to, to do new things. I don't want to get complacent and just, you know, redo the same type of portrait or the same type of painting repeatedly. Um, so, you know, I wanted to do something with a little more color and, you know, had this kind of background color showing through the whole thing. Um, so you can actually see it popping through in his flesh tones. You can see it you know, in the tie and coming through in the whites and everything like that. Uh, you know, one of the things I do, I, I have Pinterest, which I, I never really understood Pinterest. I don't know if we've spoken about this before, but, uh, you know, I heard about some artists using it as, like, a personal archive for all kinds of different reference pictures or you know art from artists that they like. So I started using Pinterest maybe about six months ago. And now I have this huge archive of all kinds of different uh, artists and, and uh, photo reference and things that I like. So one of the things that I do occasionally is I'll go through uh, my archives of different type of portraits or different types of paintings to look for inspiration, try out new styles. Um, so I saw this. This is one that I've had for uh, a long time. I found a long time ago. Let's see. Open it up. Uh, this painting by a guy named David Cobley, who is a really, really talented oil painter. And I saw this a while ago, and I loved how he had this, you know, this background red showing through and popping through, uh, and uh, the flesh tones and things like that. Um, and I wanted to try something like that. Now, obviously, if I pull mine back up, you know, I put a lot of more gold in 
uh, tones instead of, you know, when you look at his, he's got the red and then it, it stays relatively cool and has a lot of sort of the, the natural colors in it in addition to the reds where I kind of just, whoop, I kind of pushed it to the next level with having the red show through but a lot of yellows. I don't know if I'm getting too much into art speak here. But anyway, this is something new I tried, and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, and then some other things that I started a long time ago that I have not given up, but uh, sort of gone away from. But actually, no, this is one I, I, this is a personal commission I did for a friend that I, I actually finished, um, you know, trying out some new things. I think it's okay. I don't really love the background so much, but, you know, I'm trying to, figure some stuff out as I go along. Um, get out of here. This is one uh, that I started a while ago that I, I left off that I'm probably going to pick up. You know, Another thing that I struggle with, not necessarily struggle with, but I'm constantly trying to figure out is level of finish. You know, how finished do I want to go with some of these pieces? So for example, if I pull up B -b 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 -b. This one here, this is pretty super tight. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, uh, I think I showed this one in previous slide. I finished this maybe two months ago or so. And this one is it's pretty heavy on the realism. Uh, the details are, are pretty tight. And then something like this one, you know, it's it's a lot looser. I mean, obviously it's still tight in spots, but it's a lot looser. You know, more. Uh, even with the colors, a little more impressionistic. Uh, and then this one is kind of in between, and you know, I'm always trying to figure out how far do I want to push it. Um, and I think that's something I need to decide early on, like going into it, maybe do some thumbnails or things, and kind of make a conscious decision, you know, how far do I want to push it. But, you know, I think there's also something to be said for kind of figuring it out as you go along. Um, so... Basically, the point of that is I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> here's another one uh, I started and then gave up on because I decided I hated it. Um, where <laughs> you know I was going for some of the the red stuff too, and I wanted to show some of the red through in the skin tones, like I ended up doing with the the MLK one, but I got away from it. Um, this is Vladimir Klitschko. He's a boxer. I, I'm obsessed with boxing. Um, so I think I'm probably going to ditch this one and start another one. I've, I've been tossing around some ideas for a new one uh, that I'm pretty excited about. So this goes in the garbage uh, <laughs> cutting room floor file. Yeah, which is full. That, that would be a good thing to talk about too. Sometimes is the, oh, the pieces yeah. that that don't make it. Um, if if you could show a couple more things, I'm having some trouble with my video, so I'm just going to close Firefox and reopen it. Oh yeah, it so we'll fill. Really quick, yeah, yeah. Fill first. <laughs> uh, here's another one that I started working on a long time ago and, and got away from, and this is another one where I was trying to figure out how far to push it, where I ended up getting to this point where, you know, it gets really sketchy, and I was starting to think about, you know, maybe putting in pores or things like that, because in the reference it's got a lot of, like, visible pores on his forehead and stuff like that. And then I went back in and decided to smooth it out. I have no idea. Um, I left this one a while ago. It's something I might come back to at some point, but you know, like I was talking about, like Aaron, you mentioned, I have just oodles of noodles on my <laughs> cutting room floor. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, that would be a fun conversation of itself. As far yeah. as uh, client work, all this stuff has been personal. Um, client work, I finished some big project for a financial company, um, and since then it's been a little bit light with the holidays and doing teaching, but it's kind of been in a funk, so you know, I'm trying to do some more of these personal pieces to try and spark something and sort of get inspired again. Yeah, it, anyway. it, it definitely comes and goes, you know, you can't, you can't always force yourself to be creative. No. You just gotta, gotta do it when it's the season. And, Got my uh, video. <laughs> Cut my video working again. I had to, had to use my phone there for a second. I was freaking out. Oh, jeez. Well, you're back. I was, I was like trying to watch it on a little screen, and I realized <laughs> like, I'm like, look. That's why I was looking down for the first half of this video. Yeah. Um, oh, and another really quick thing, which is kind of relevant, um, you know, as far as getting back into the this swing of things and, you know, getting motivated again, 
I just recently started going back to the gym, <laughs> which I hadn't done in like four to five months. And I, when I'm not exercising, I just get freaking crazy. And uh, and I, I've always known that you know being physically active is always a good thing. It always puts me in a good frame of mind. And I just don't do it. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm like that too. I just. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I don't get a lot of physical activity other than like drawing. You know, my arm gets to work know, out, and that's about it. I know for me, I just for my crazy lizard brain, I, I need to just sort of exert myself and do some kind of primal man <sighs> stuff. Yeah. You need to fight. <laughs> I, I live like you know two blocks from a gym, so I don't really have an excuse. But oh, it's very easy to find excuses not to. Yeah. But uh, you're tired. Yeah, uh, I teach at I teach at the Cubert School, which is a, a sort of a comic book centric school with a lot of really talented comic book artists who are active in the industry, and they all say the same thing that it's it's so important um, because you just you lose so much time when you're at the drawing table, you're at the computer, or whatever else. It's so easy to get caught up and, and sucked in, and and you lose balance all across the board, be it, you know, socially with your wife or your significant other or your family, uh, and you, you stop really, it's, it's easy to stop taking care of yourself physically. Um, so that's something that I have been told that I can attest to myself that it's so important to really uh, put something in place and, and make that a priority, even if it seems like it, you know, well, I have so much work to do, I can't get to it today. Just take it from me, it's whatever you have to do to put something in place just to to get outside of, and it doesn't have to be like going to the gym, just whatever you can do to, to break outside of your your workplace, go for a walk or do anything, just to sort of get out of your head, sort of restart things and come back with fresh eyes, I, I can't uh, I can't recommend that enough. So that's my piece. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's where inspiration comes from. It's from outside of your studio. You know, you can only you can only get so inspired getting images off of Google. You know, you ha you kind of have to see some things in person to really understand them. Aaron, you have such lovely eyes, and they go <laughs> beautifully with a background color. Oh yeah. Well, I that that's why I have that thing. You might think it's a green screen, but it's just to bring out the sparkle in my eyes. I like it. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's another um, source of inspiration for me. I think I will show some stuff. Yeah, what are here. you up to? What have you been up to? You dashing son of a gun, yeah. Okay, let's see. So I've been That's doing. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Um, so I've been kind of ramping up my my YouTube channel and trying to post a video every day. Maybe it's not going to be like my video, but it might be someone else's that I think is something cool. It's digital art related, but for the most part, I'm releasing pretty much a, a video every day and a lot of them are, are my own stuff so this is like one one of the series it's kind of like a let's paint thing where I'm picking specific topics and in this case it's kind of been like heroes and villains from Nintendo games that's awesome um, so I did like Metal Man and then Frog from Chrono Trigger and Samus from Metroid and then now I'm on Krang I'm gonna try to put a little more effort into this one because the this is obviously a work in progress. The, mm -hmm. the ones I've done before were kind of just like line art and not very detailed, and I, I kind of got some flack more or less for that from just not really applying myself as much as I should. So I'm going to try to make this one pretty cool and pretty detailed. Um, it looks a little odd because the way I paint, I kind of do everything as individual layers. So if we look at like the body... The body's like a layer for the nostrils and for I'm the nose. Terrible with layers. The shades. <laughs> well, it, I don't know. For, for me, it's like if I'm going to paint digitally, I want to paint efficiently. Like that's the point of painting on a computer. So you can't you can't use layers with oil paint or acrylic paint in real life or any traditional medium because they're. I mean, there's layers. You know, you can add paint and remove paint and so on. But You're, as far uh, as what's, what's it called? Uh, not vellum. The, like the transparent sheets that they yeah. use for, you know... Uh, yeah, acetate, acetate sheets. Yeah, you can do that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's layers in, like, animation and things like that, but you, you can't, you know, with oil paint, like, just take right. a nose and move it around or stretch it out. So I figure why not use a lot of layers and then keep them nice and organized and 
So eventually I will finish this up process for the whole thing from beginning to end. So it'll be available on YouTube later. That's kind of really what I've been doing is just doing a lot of painting, but not really like making paintings for the, the sake of like selling them, but just mm -hmm. to make paintings to show other people how to paint, you know, particular things like a rose or an eyeball or things like that. So that's... Yeah. That's that's one of the things that I have always admired about you the most uh, is that you are incredibly consistent with you know whatever it is that you do you know be it uploading a video a day. One of my biggest issues is I am not consistent and I, I get very easily you know turned on to something and I get really passionate about it and then the slightest thing comes up and I just get friggin' bummed out and, and I lose track of things that. I don't know how common that is. I I know that it happens a lot with artists, you know, with artists that I've spoken to. Maybe it's the crazy artist's temperament or whatever. Maybe it's just I'm dysfunctional. But <laughs> I know that it, it's hard for me to, to be consistent. It's hard for me to, you know, set out to do something and keep the, the motivation and the inspiration and keep up with it. And I feel terrible that I can't do that and, you know, I beat myself up for it, which probably compounds the problem, but the point of this little aside is that it's it's something I really admire uh, that you do and something, you know, I, I aspire to, to do myself is, is to be consistent and, uh, you know, put something out consistently, be it a personal project or something uh, like an educational resource, because it is important, and, and people thrive off of consistency, and it's just a matter of, you know, getting out of your head and, and doing whatever it is that you set out to do and getting all that other crap out of your head. So that's something yeah. I'm trying to deal with, and you know, I very much admire you for, for being able to consistently do that. Yeah, well, well thank you. I mean, it's something that, you know, I didn't start out doing. I mean, I'd, I'd sit there and go, like, what's the point in using Twitter or Pinterest or any of these things and didn't even want to use them. And then now I see, like, if I'm not doing anything else and I don't, like, if I'm checking Facebook or something on my phone, mm -hmm. I could just be pinning one of my videos that pre-exists and uh, maybe a couple people will watch that video. A thousand people aren't going to watch it from pinning it. But right. you know, if, I'm, if I'm doing, like, a pin every day, it's going to make a difference. And a lot of it's about just doing it anyways, and sure, it's not going to pay off now, but in a couple of years, you might be like, I'll be damned. There's something that I did that I thought wasn't worth anything that's now getting me a lot of commissions or something. So you, right. you have to ease into it, and then once you start getting rewarded from doing it, you're going to start to see that, like, I mean, me personally, I'm seeing, like, if I post a video almost every day, I'm getting a lot more views and a lot more interaction, and that's the only way I'm going to get to my goal of, of having... 200 million subscribers is if I post a, a video every day. So, you know, so, do, doing one sporadically was like, right. if I look at my analytics, it just kind of like plateaued. It almost went down yeah. for, for a period of time because I wasn't doing anything. So how have you seen that, you know, uh, as far as measurable results? If you don't mind my asking, you know, how have you seen things pick up? You know what? What has been the payoff? Be it you know in terms of views or things like that, or you know what what makes it what what keeps you going? You know how how does it pay off? Well, really, really to put it easy, like you have your Google Analytics and you can see how many views you're getting. Like you get this chart and it looks like a mountain, and you know that if it's going up, you're doing something right, and if it's going down, you're not doing something right. And you can really get into it on like every level, like how good are ads doing, how good is this individual video doing, how good is this annotation that I put on there doing. And when you, when you start to see that chart go up, you start to see that like, you know, if I can make it go higher and higher and higher and higher, it's just all a numbers game. It's like how many videos can I make? I can make a bunch of random, like, I was doing this draw this series where I'm just drawing random words and I started out with like the most obscure, stupid things that no one's going to want to draw, like who's going to want to draw a wrench, you know. And I started to see, like, maybe I need to be more focused and go and actually look and see what the most popular searches are. Right. You know, eyeball, rose, car, stuff like that, and do those and just bang those out. Because if I've got 20 videos that are doing really well, if I make another 20 that are just like that, that's that's doubling my income. And it seems, like, it seems weird to be an artist and then, like, but exist, you know, almost entirely online and, and through video, but... I think to me that's that's fun. I get a little more satisfaction out of that because I know 
that many more people are or they're watching my content for free, but in the long run, it pays off. Maybe it doesn't always pay off, you know, monetarily, but it, I don't know. When you when you start seeing that people in other countries are watching your work and you get comments from people in you know Norway or something, it's it's nice. So I, I like YouTube in that regard. Um, as far as paying off, I, I make some money off the ad revenue, but I don't like showing the ads. So you know, I'd like to get to a point to maybe I could have people donate money to me rather than have to make them watch one of those ads. Right. Um, it's opened a lot of doors for sponsorship. You know, like. We all know how much I love Wacom and, and Corel Painter, and that's you know honestly because I do actually love those products. Yeah. But they they see that they see that I'm passionate about it, and they see that other people see that I'm passionate about it, and they get passionate about it, and so it creates this um, this kind of cycle where it's good for everybody. You know, they they hook me up, I hook them up, and everybody gets to make some digital art and enjoy it. So everybody it, wins. It's it's. It's worth looking into YouTube. It seems like one of those things where it's like, you know, why bother? It's just a video thing. But there's so many people who use it that statistically you can't really fail if you just do it, you know? And it's it's not hard to just put up a video of your of you talking about it's essentially what we're talking about now by yourself, you know? Like, mm -hmm. what are you working on today? Or what do you want to be doing with, with 2015, you know, and, and things like that. People... People eat up those videos more than they eat up the videos where I'm like, here's how you draw this, you know, super awesome thing. People mm -hmm. would rather, believe it or not, listen to me talk about myself. So it's probably <laughs> also those piercing eyes of yours. Yeah. <laughs> Better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to look into that then. I Torin, I think I think I think, you, I, I think you need a YouTube channel and all of us doing these videos, we, we need like if, we, if this becomes a regular thing, we can take these. You know, obviously we're going to publish this later, but we can cut these up and, you know, we do one of these a month. We've got X amount of videos that we can post each month. So. Yeah, I'm probably going to ask you for the uh, the MP4s if yeah. you're full cool with that. Um, another thing I was going to ask, um, I, I think you started to talk about it. The monetization option button toggle on YouTube. How mm -hmm. does that work? Is, is it worth it? Do you oh, use it? It's 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 free it's free money. I mean, it's free money at the expense of, you know, people having to watch those stupid ads. And I don't think ultimately that's that's the goal is for me to make money off of YouTube. You know, because mm -hmm. it's you're not you're not gonna make a you're you're not gonna get your your rent paid and all your bills paid off of monetization. You know, starting out like maybe if you've got X amount of subscribers and your videos are something that can be easily monetized, like let's say a product review of a tablet those tablet companies or other electronics companies are going to want to advertise on that video versus if it's something that's just more self-indulgent like me drawing Krang from Ninja Turtles, you know, that's going to be a lot harder to monetize. So it, it's it's worth it because it's free money, but you have to make sure that it's your own content. And if you're right. using anything like, you know, even like you could, you could make Photoshop tutorials, but to, you might technically have to have permission from Photoshop. Now, in my experience, Photoshop... Or Adobe isn't, you know, they're not going to like yank your your channel down because you're doing them a huge favor by making videos. But right. if you're using someone else's copyrighted music, or like, I'm I'm taking somewhat of a risk by by putting up Krang, but I'm not going to monetize Krang because I don't own Ninja Turtles. You know, that's not my property, so I'm not going to try to make any money off of it. It's just there as something to entertain people. Mm -hmm. So if it's if it's your own stuff, you're just doing drawings of your own artwork and things like that. That's totally fine to to put up and monetize and you will make some money off of it. You know, how much money you make, that's going to depend on how much you put into it. Oh, by the way, your lower third is off. I know. It's, it's a good thing. Stop the video. <laughs> oh, man. My lower third's missing. I'm sorry, everybody. That's so unprofessional. They're like, just, they're like who the hell is this guy <laughs> with those eyes? This is... <laughs> <laughs> guy just running his mouth. <laughs> Lower third on. Oh, oh now it's backwards. Hang on. Let me let me just get it. We don't have any links for you either. <laughs> how, how was that? That was pretty cool. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> Nobody um, saw that. It just it looked like you doing this. <laughs> so, uh, we kind of went off on like a a little how to how to sell things on YouTube seminar there. Um, <laughs> Maybe we can jump into into a, a couple of other questions. Yeah, other talking points. Also, uh, did you have your Aaron? Did you have your link before uh, on your lower third goes down? It's just your name. You're on it today, man. I got you. 
Everybody Watch knows who them. I am, man. <laughs> They've all seen my movies. <laughs> right. Yeah, I just thought of one other thing I uh, forgot to share. Yeah, let's check it out. Because you're from Jersey, aren't you, uh, Mike? Yep. Yeah, I painted your boy Chris Christie. Oh, yes. <laughs> no <laughs> comment. I saw it. As far as a piece of artwork, I think it's wonderful. I'm not going to say anything else. Pull it up. <laughs> You're Based on its artistic merit alone, I'd like to see it. Nice. <laughs> I, I, I like I like the play on like there's two butts and then his stomach kind of looks like a butt too. <laughs> like oh, it's like I uh, hate the cowboys. It's, it's like sacred geometry there. <laughs> it's a, I had it's to a, do it, man. It, it's it was kind of, too easy. It's like a holy trinity of butt and belly butt. Yeah. And then it's just fantastic. Oh, man. It works so good. So also, what did you do as far as, I'm curious, as far as reference for the the jacket on him, how did you go about doing that? A lot of trickery. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of trickery and some help from some people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I don't want to know. Uh, um, yeah, it, it gets deep, man. It's, it's a lot of magic. What is that piece that. behind it? Is that something we can look at? Yeah, uh... I That's forgot I've awesome. been doing these uh these Snoop Dogg things. Uh, he has a store online that he's selling merchandise, and I'm one of the artists that uh is creating content for him. That's friggin' awesome. Yeah. So we did that one. Uh, we did a Christmas themed one. Dude, <laughs> nice. the holidays. Yeah. I like I like the glow on all the lights. Did you use uh, Photoshop for that or Painter? Yeah, uh, Photoshop. Nice. I, yeah, I didn't know there was a glow brush that would do that, or, or I don't know, maybe you had to... It's, uh... Oh, yeah. How did I do it? It's, uh... Like a screen? FX stuff, like the effects you can put on the, uh... uh oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, like the, inner glow, outer glow. That's it. <laughs> you know, I always forget that, because, like, I'll go in with a glow brush and painter, and, like, I just paint in each one of those, but then I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You could just, just do the filter. Yeah, that probably the least is efficient awesome. one here. I'd probably just manually paint it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go. Pick each color lighter and lighter yep. and lighter. And yep. then I did, that was the last one I did. That's cool. Kind of I a sketch. I did a couple of those. It's like kind of coming out of a sketchbook. I, I like the way you use layers. It gives it a lot of depth. Well, thank you. I'm trying How to go back get in because uh, like these are going on T-shirts and stuff. Right. So. And you go back in the grunge effect on the fringes. Yeah. And then the uh, also the like the dripping paint. Yeah, yeah the, try to make it. You know, we had that kind of debate before, like you know, traditional versus making it look traditional. Right, right. Yeah. And like I always kind of like trying to make it look traditional, even though it definitely isn't. Mhm. Mm it's part of the challenge. I think it's fun. Yeah, I mean, I I like it because I mean, me personally, I would paint traditionally if. It went a little bit faster and <laughs> wasn't so convenient for when I messed things up completely. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I could fix them so much easier, and you know, I mean, like if if I could do all those things just as fast traditionally, I would paint traditionally. But I can't yeah. do that, so I stick with the computer. That looks great. What was uh? Well, let's 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 move things along. I think right, Aaron. Well, yeah. uh, first and talking points. Let, let's also throw out the. Uh, the audience is welcome to submit questions over in the questions and answers panel, and we'd be happy to answer them. Do we have anybody um, on by any chance? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, 500,000 viewers right now. Oh, thanks. Um, you guys uh, have the... Oh, oh wait, I, I added about uh, four zeros, five zeros there. No, we, we are so enthralled with watching the video that yeah. they can't even take a, a minute to think of a question. <laughs> I don't blame them. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's exciting. Uh, well, let's let's throw out a couple of questions of our own. So let's start with Torin. What what are some of your, or maybe one or two of your first childhood memories of making art? Like, how did you get into making art? How did I get into making art? Uh, honestly, it's something I've always done, since as far as I can remember. Um, I'm a, I come from like a single parent household for the most part. Uh, so when I was a kid, like, that was what me and my mom would do. We would, like, uh, do the coloring book crayon thing. And that's just something I always did. And, like, I don't have any brothers or sisters. And so uh, 
I wouldn't have anything to do, and I would just get paper and draw. And so I started to get pretty good at it. So my mom would bring me home like those huge reams of paper from her job. Mm-hmm. And I literally had a stack that was like a foot high nice. of computer paper when I was a kid, and I would just draw it all day, and I just, just kept doing it. And she's got a, a folder or probably a box at this point full nice. of like old like Wolverine drawings and <laughs> Ninja Turtles and stuff. Yeah. And like they're horrific to go back and look at, <laughs> but then <laughs> she's got them all. So that that's how I got into it. That's cool. Yeah, I can I can relate to a lot of that because I used to like to draw my own little comics and I'd get those big things of paper too and just go through it, you know. Yeah. I did a comic book based on that cartoon Doug once. Uh, I remember Doug. <laughs> I, I did Doug. a lot of stuff. I loved Mr. Dink. <laughs> Very expensive. <laughs> well, hello there, Douglas. <laughs> anyway. Uh, how about you, Mike? What are what are some of your childhood stories about oh, discovering art? Um, I think some of my, my first memories are kind of similar to you, Torn, where I remember I came up with some kind of story that, like, a five-year-old would come up with, and I would uh, dictate it to my mom, and she would write, the like, the story at the top of a page, and then I would illustrate it with marker or whatever else. And uh, so that was, like, my first collaborative experience. And then, uh, you know, I... I also definitely used a lot of computer paper over the years. Uh, I think it's funny that one of the things that I struggled with the most was drawing faces, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, uh, especially eyes. I could never do eyes, so like I would draw a person, and uh, you know, I draw a face, and I would leave out the eyes, and I would call my mom over, and <laughs> she would come and draw, like slap the eyes on the head, and uh, so remember that. Uh, I also remember, at a fairly young age, uh, taking art class, art classes at like a traditional visual arts center, and uh, I was I was really young, and I was in a class with maybe like early teens or something like that. And they were ruthless and just like friggin' nasty, and it made fun of me and hurt my feelings, and oh. and it was really bad. Like, it was really bad, and it totally turned me off of the whole experience. And so, like, I didn't go to art classes after that for a super long time. Um, and the the chump who was teaching the class didn't do anything. And I think my mom came and talked to him, and it was like, I don't know. I mean, given, I, I drew some pretty stupid stuff. There was, like, a little challenge where we were all supposed to do something for the Red, uh, the Red Cross, and my drawing was of a football player who'd been struck by lightning, <laughs> <laughs> being tended to by by a nurse. Yeah, but but like, how creative is that? Though? Like, like that's, 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 that, that, that's it's such an imaginative thing where everybody else in that class probably did like, oh, I'm going to draw an apple or yeah. you know an ice cream cone or something like like wh- whatever was suggested for them to draw, they probably did, and that's the kind of teacher you had and the kind of peers you had or people who probably were in art school, but then now are, like, you know, working at Jack in the Box or something, so... And so, since then, I gave up on my imagination. Yeah. And, uh, the rest of my life has just been, you know, just completely boring and monotonous and depressing, so thanks for that. <laughs> art right there with you, so it's all good. Yeah. Um, no, but, but since then, uh, you know, I, I'd always sort of just drawn to myself, um... And uh, I'm trying to think, I probably remember a lot of really uh, useful and and uh, insightful things later. But that's that's all I got for you now. <laughs> cool. Well, I I can kind of agree with with what you two said. On I've always been an artist. You know, ever since I can remember drawing with crayons, um, I would draw all the time, and people would encourage me and. You know, it got to the point to where people are like, you know, maybe this is something you should do for a living, and started to follow that a little bit. I'd always take art class in grade school. I took it in high school, and 
then when it came the day of, of me, you know, being like college age, then everybody's like, you don't want to be an artist. You're not going to make any money as an artist. That's impossible. You should get a job building computers or, you know, something like that. So then I went from like being encouraged all my life to like, no, nah, get practical, yeah. man. And, um, you know, I did that for a while. But I, th I think really what got me into doing art is that my dad is a really good artist. He doesn't, he doesn't do it like, you know, for money. It's kind of more for just just for the Hobby. sake of drawing. Yeah. But, I mean, this guy could, like, draw, like, Spider-Man, like that, like, in pencil, you know, like, totally comic book style, or, like, Alvin and the Chipmunks just draw all three of them like that, and it's pretty amazing. I've I've really tried to get him to do some digital art, but I think it's, like, you know, it's, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but... Never too late. To, yeah, but that's it's really kind of been my inspiration. You know, I, I decided at an early age I want to be an artist, and I stuck to it for most of my life, except for my early adulthood where I got a little sidetracked and tried to have a real job and then I started to realize like whatever I'm doing is going to be a, is going to be a job and if I'm going to put effort into something it might as well be something that I enjoy doing most of the time because <laughs> sometimes art can be a job like it like anything else but oh, you God, know yes. uh, <laughs> you're, if, if you're struggling you're struggling you know if you're struggling as an artist that's better than struggling as a uh, whatever else, you know, you could do with your time if that's that's your choice, so... Absolutely. I, I, you know, I I can think back to to back to before I've had as much success as I've had now, where I was, you know, I had pretty much living in, like, a little bedroom and doing all my work out of there, and if I had to go back to that, I'd be happy doing that versus having to get a job doing something that I really, really don't want to do that's not art-related. Right. Mm -hmm. Um... I got sidetracked a little bit there. <laughs> uh, how about how about everyone's first experiences with digital art? Torin, do you want to start? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, I gotta give uh, props to my man uh, Sam from we went to KU together. Uh, I was a junior or sophomore in college. I used to do all of my work on like black mat board. And uh, with colored pencil and stuff like that, and uh, friend Sam, he always had a Wacom tablet, and he did all his work on it, and it was really cool. And I was like, I hate you because it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really good. And we we were friends all through college, and then finally, like my junior senior year, I like stopped being like, I wish I knew how to do that, and I was like, man, I got to talk to him. And, like, tell me what to do. <laughs> so, like, I, I got I got a Wacom tablet the Christmas before that for my mom. And it just sat there on my desk for literally a year and a half. Because I didn't know how to use it. I couldn't <laughs> figure it out. Like, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Completely lost. And so I finally, like, just had this breakdown. And I emailed Sam and was like, Sam, dude, how do you do this <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? And so he he gave me all his keyboard shortcuts. He told me everything that he knew about how to use Photoshop. And he just sent me this long email. And that's when I finally, like, even took the first steps of, like, okay, now I know, you know, what that eyedrop thing does. Like, I didn't know anything. Like, I was completely lost. So without him, I probably wouldn't be doing this. And so that was really my first experience with doing any kind of digital art was finally humbling myself enough to ask that guy for help, and I, I appreciate it. That's You're cool. out here watching, Sam. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> um, what was me? I guess me. Yeah. Um, so my first experience with digital art, um, I guess was back in the Microsoft Paint days. <laughs> Uh, drawing whatever with a mouse. I used to be really into vampires, so I remember drawing vampires with a mouse in Microsoft Paint. A laugh, it's cool. It's really cool. Um, I'm just trying to picture what kind of vampire. Like Twilight super awesome vampire. ones. Twilight super vampire. awesome ones. Okay. Just cool. Don't worry about it. Um, it was Pee Wee Herman from yeah. the Vampires there. <laughs> And then, uh, and then I discovered Adobe Photoshop. Uh, my friend Scott, at the time, had Photoshop, and uh, remember, like the first thing, and like we did these these things collaboratively. 
um, where we took a picture of Michael Jordan and we put like a Superman cape on him, and that was like that was it. <laughs> and uh, and it's like whoa, like the idea of layers and being able to move things around independently was like bush. Um, and then you know, I started, I got Photoshop for myself, uh, and I started drawing in Photoshop still with a mouse and did that for a while and created some awful stuff, which I could probably find somewhere. Ooh, uh, I'll let somebody else talk after and I'll, I'll find something. Um, but then my first experience with a tablet was maybe my junior year of high school. And I was taking some, uh, like, I was actually taking video game design classes out in California, um, which I quickly gave up on. Uh, once I got to college, I, I wanted to do game design and I gave up on it. That's another story. But anyway, um, taking classes out in California and uh, in their, like, their student store, or library, whatever, they had tablets. Um, and... I, I guess I had heard about them before. Maybe some of the kids in the class had used them and told me about it. Um, so I got my first tablet. I got a, a Wacom Graphire something or other. And uh, I plugged it into the computer and started drawing. And I was like, oh, my God. And, uh, and that was it. Um, now, as far as, like, painting, digital painting, now I was drawing and putzing around for I don't know how many years. Uh, the majority of my... Photoshop walking career, and then, you know, it wasn't until maybe three years ago where I actually discovered digital painting, and then things, you know, took a turn in another direction, and that's what I do now, but, you know, in a nutshell, that's that's how I got started with digital artwork. Nice. Well, this, this works out perfectly, because we have a viewer question from Randall Williams, which is exactly what we were just talking about, so awesome. Oh, hello, Randall. He, he, he wants to know, as far as digital painting... How did you first get into it, and what do you recommend for someone just getting into it software-wise and as far as getting good at it? So we've kind of covered most of that. Um, um, hmm. I, as far as me getting into it, yeah. um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back kind of pre-Wacom to this thing I had was made by VTech. I think it plugged into your VCR, and it was kind of like a Wacom tablet. You could you know, kind of draw with it and do different things. I so, remember those. Yeah, so I think that was probably my first digital art experience, though I didn't connect that as being art. I kind of saw it as more like a toy or a video game. Mm. Um, and then I used Mario Paint. Like, I loved Mario Paint. <laughs> and that's basically, like, you know, how I make money now is Mario Paint, you know? <laughs> like, just <laughs> making, like, animations and, and, you know, audio and graphics and stuff and... Um, Kit picks. We had this. We had this computer class in fifth grade. I, I moved. I moved. Oh, to, picks. Yeah, I, I I lived in Oklahoma for a lot of my childhood, so we didn't really have computer class. Like the computers we had were like ancient computers. Yeah. So when I moved to Seattle in fifth grade, they had computer class, and they had like Kid Picks and like Sim City, and it was like, okay, sit here for a half an hour, an hour, however long it was, and just like do whatever you want. And so I'd go into, like, the, I don't remember what the program was, the graphic design program, and make a gradient that's across the whole page from red to black. And then I printed it, and I got in so much trouble because I wasted, like, <laughs> so much ink just to print out a gradient because I thought gradients were, like, the coolest thing. Gradients are where it's at, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I'd done a lot of graphic design stuff later in life, and I think it was because I was trying to make flash animations that I read in a book you could get something with pen pressure, and I was like, okay... Mm. I'll check that out, and got a UC Logic tablet off of eBay or something like that. Um, and you know what? It, it was kind of a crappy tablet, but it did the trick. I mean, I got a lot of work done on it, and um, I still have one of my old tablets. So I got into digital painting a long time ago, but it took me, it took me a long time to really connect that as, as being like something that's art and not a game. And in between that time kind of before I started getting to digital art, I had this opinion that digital art wasn't real art and that I wasn't going to do it. Same thing with graphic design. I was like, in, in college, I wanted to take commercial art and make logos with rulers. And it's like, then that year, everybody was like, nope, now we're making everything with computers. So I kind of went from like being totally against digital art to absolutely loving it. <laughs> you know, I, I remember uh, 
like the the specific the exact moment where I got turned on to digital painting before I really understood where it was and it was actually a long time before I, I started digital painting uh, I was working uh, for a video game publisher at one point uh, interning when I was in college and uh, one of the guys I worked with was all about video games and uh, like digital art and all that stuff uh, and one day we were taking the train home together and he had a, uh, a copy of Imagine FX magazine and he showed it to me and, and you know, I flipped through it and I was like this stuff is awesome and there was this one image that I remember oh jeez I think it's, uh, it's by this guy I, I'm probably not pronouncing his name right M uh, Michael Kutch, Kutch? Oh, Kutch yeah. yeah. you know that guy? Yep. and uh, it was a painting he did of like this monkey guy in a spacesuit, which was awesome. I've seen and, uh, that painting. Yeah, I think I know right. What you're talking about. And I, I, I freaking loved it. And I was like, I, I need to know how this is done. You know, how? I want how. And uh, <laughs> so I, I remember seeing that and like looking through the rest of the the magazine and, and kind of starting to get fascinated with this stuff. Um, but then, for whatever reason, things didn't really click. I didn't put it together until a little while later, uh, where I started finding, you know, I found a couple digital painting tutorials online, and I decided, what the hell, and gave it a shot, and the rest, as they say, is history. Um, but, you know, that, that was the moment for me. Do you remember for you, Thorn? Uh, what was the moment? I Actually, yeah, and it's, it's kind of ironic. Uh, but, all right, okay, let me see how I want to tell this. <laughs> I had already started messing around in Photoshop, and I taught myself a lot into where I could, you know, do a painting of a person, and, like, you could kind of tell who it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, when I really was like, I'm going to be a digital artist, was when I first saw Jason Seiler's stuff. Yeah. That's when it was something different, cause it it I I can't really explain what it was, to to the point where like as I looked at his stuff for maybe like a week and then I immediately was like I'm taking that man's class, because it just something something about it was completely different. Like I'd seen a lot of digital art up to that point, and I'm trying to think if it it was the Nelly painting. And the Nelly, yeah. the Nelly, I think, is even traditional. But it was something about that painting, and then like I saw all this other stuff that was digital. It was like, okay, I gotta talk to that guy. And He's that's when talented. I was like, I'm gonna, yeah, like that's when it was like, okay, I'm gonna be a digital artist. That's when it was like it kind of clicked. We got uh, we got another question, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, this question is from Tracy Snow. Aside from drafting in high school, I'm not by nature an artist yet but I'm learning from scratch. I'm using digital tools to learn Wacom Tablet, Sketchbook Pro, and Painter 2015 by choice. Is this a goofy idea? Is there any advice you would give? So I think I think they're asking if using the Wacom Tablet, Sketchbook Pro, and Painter is a good idea and what advice you have. Okay, I'm, I'm going to answer this real quick. Hit it. I get a lot of this. It's just tools. Like, I don't know if people feel like you're going to, there's like some sort of magic involved in digital, like, Photoshop or Painter. It's the me a picture button. Yeah, but yeah exactly. <laughs> or, like, because people are like, well, what tablet do you use and what program? Like, it doesn't matter. It, yeah. It, it's what you do with it. it. This is no different than pencil and paper. There's, you know, advantages of using a computer. There's also some setbacks to using a computer. It kind of goes back and forth. So it's just more tools. So any way you can learn to actually create your image, as long as it comes out the way you want it to, then you're doing it the right way. So whether that be Sketchbook Pro and, and Painter and a Wacom tablet or, you know, sidewalk chalk or dirt. <laughs> I had a friend who drew in his own blood. <laughs> like, whatever you want to do to learn how to, you know, just get your point across and have it, you know, be aesthetically pleasing, that's all that really matters. It doesn't matter what computer program you but, you know, and then again, it, it does, it comes it down to personal preference. You know, if it's traditional, everybody has their favorite pencil or their favorite type of paper, but like you said, Torn, it all comes down to 
it's it's less about the wand. It's more about the magician. If, I mean, if you can't draw, if you can't paint, if you don't have color theory or anatomy or things like that, you can have the most high tech tablet in the world, and it's not going to matter. Uh, yeah. So all yeah. this is to say that you know, try it out. Um, you know, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, great. Um, but I, I don't think with any of the products that you mentioned or any of the products that we mentioned, you you can't go wrong. Uh, it's just a question of you know which workflow best suits you, which product you know best suits your particular workflow. But what you know, any way you go, you can't go wrong. Yeah, like if, you, just, if you're uh, looking for advice as far as that question, uh, I would ask myself if are you like are you comfortable with the web tablet and the Sketchbook Pro and Painter? If you're comfortable with it, then yeah, just keep keep using it because that's the only way you're going to get better is to continue to draw with those. You know those items. Right. So if you like those things, then yeah, use them and get better. That's that's the only advice I really have for you. And yeah. plenty of people, you know, use a bunch of different programs. I know Aaron, uh, you, you know, you do work in Painter. I think you also do some work in Photoshop. Yes. Or is I it exclusively I, in Painter? I can paint in Photoshop, but I guess I guess it does come down to personal preference because like you, you guys can do some amazing stuff in Photoshop, and I'm like. I can't do anything other than make layouts with it, you know, and like mm. use it to edit photos and stuff like that. Um, Painter, I, I like Painter a lot and I like Art Rage a lot, but Sketchbook Pro, there's a lot of reasons why I don't like it. Maybe it's changed, but when I tried to use it, there weren't any blenders, and I like to be able to blend. Right. You know, like uh, the thing I like about Painter is that there's watercolor, there's oil, there's ink, there's everything, and it all it all kind of works to simulate. Those, those particular kinds of traditional media, whereas some of these other programs, it's like you get your digital brush one, digital brush two, digital brush three, and it's like everything comes out looking really really digital, which is right. fine if that's the effect you want, but I want that kind of more like ambiguous, is it digital or is it traditional look. And, and I want to go awesome. yeah, I, I go straight for a blender. I don't want to have to tweak a brush that's meant for something else right. to get it to do what I want it to do. But I also like uh, to have an option. You actually, I'm sorry, we got a follow-up from Tracy, which actually turns things in another direction, if you want to read yeah. that. As, as far as skipping the, she's asking, she's saying, sure, I'm saying that I'm skipping the pencil and paper route and using only digital tools to learn from scratch. So if you're learning from scratch, I think it's good to do both. I mean, you don't really want to do one or the other because there's a lot you can learn from drawing with pencil and ink, and there's a lot you can learn from drawing digitally. If you're going to draw only digitally, that that's fine, but if you want to have some understanding of how to make a, a drawing look like it's drawn in pencil, or you want to make a drawing look like it's an acrylic painting, you have to work a little bit with acrylic or with pencil to be able to see those those effects that those medium those media create. Now this, this is a tough question, um, because I mean, if you look at it, we, we are in that transition phase. I think our generation, uh, you know, our, our age group specifically, we're kind of caught in that transition where I would assume we all grew up traditionally and made the transition and now we're coming into an age where you might have a lot of situations like this where people start digitally and there's nothing before that. Um, so I really, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I, I mean, I think, you know, like we were talking before, tools are tools that um, I, I guess the fundamentals apply regardless of the medium. Um, like you said, Aaron, you know, if there are some kind of traditional effects that you want to simulate digitally, it definitely is going to help to to have gotten your hands in there traditionally beforehand. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think that it's a goofy idea. I don't think that, that no. you can go wrong by starting traditional or digitally. Um, it's it's just what whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. I, I don't think I've really that I know of. I don't think I've met anybody who started digitally with no prior traditional experience. You know, I'd be interesting to you know as time goes on to see some of those artists who, who start there and continue, and if there's any discernible difference between them and and those artists who started traditionally and made the transition. So, be a be a trendsetter, be a trailblazer, Tracy, and. Uh, you know, honestly, honestly, Tracy, you know, if it's, if you're really like really concerned with it, you can still use a pencil. <laughs> like, you yeah. still make them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still sketch with a pencil. Yeah, you can you can just do do it for fun. Like, 
not everything you do has to be like this final masterpiece. So like you could learn everything you want to learn in digital, and then if you want to just you know learn some drawing skills on your own and like a sketchbook, just go buy you some pencils and use them. And all it's gonna it's only all it's gonna do is help you. So yeah, and the, you could, the battery life on a physical sketch pad is eternal, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> I stole that joke from the. There was recently a like a little advertisement for IKEA. Did anybody see that? Uh. Uh-uh. They did a little ad for like their new IKEA catalog and like did a spoof of the Apple iPad, whatever. And they were talking about how instead of an iBook or an eBook, it's a book book. And <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what do we have next? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I appreciate all the questions, so feel free to sneak in a, a few more if anybody else has any in the audience. Um, let's, let's give people a chance to do that, and let's jump off on what I think might be kind of a fun topic. Whether or not you listen to music while you paint or create, and what are, what are some things that you like to listen to, like you know, artists or albums or types of music? And while you do that, I'm going to try and find that... Photoshop mouse picture I was talking about. All right, well, I'll answer uh, Aaron's question while you look for that. Uh, yeah, I have something. I have earphones on constantly while I work. I almost never work in silence. I always have either have like a TV on or something. But as far as uh, music and things like that, uh, I listen to so much rap music that it is ridiculous. I also listen to a lot of uh, stand-up comedy albums while I work. <laughs> and uh, I listen, like, I don't know if you guys know who Bill Burr is. He has a yeah. podcast he puts out every Monday. I listen to the Monday morning podcast constantly while I'm working. And, uh, yeah, just a lot, a lot of rap music and a lot of uh, comedy. That's the majority of what goes into a... Uh... And every now and again, I'll throw, like, an audio book in there. <laughs> Nice. Um, um, hang on one second. I actually found this file, and then I'm going to answer the question. Um, but just briefly, to go back to an earlier point, here's one of my drawings from back in the Photoshop days with a mouse. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hold your horses. Let's open this sucker up. Wham! Where this was, and it's crappy resolution, but this was drawn in Photoshop with a mouse where the backgrounds were actually done in Bryce 3D. Yeah, I remember Bryce. Um, so this is some pretty awesome that's, stuff. That's that's pretty remarkable for a mouse because the mouse. Now, hang is on, like, because these are these characters. They transition from like medieval ages to modern yeah. times. You can tell because now they have sunglasses and haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's got a barbed wire tattoo. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah anyway, but... uh, music. Let's go. <laughs> let's go back to music. <laughs> um, and stop screen sharing. Similarly, I am. I'm always listening to music when I'm working. Um, now, as far as what music do I listen to? Uh, it it's pretty much anything, whatever I have. Um, but if there are specific projects, um. I do try and cater my, you know, my musical selection to something that's going to fit that project. So, for example, um, there was a painting I did a while ago of Robert Glasper, who's a musician I'm a big fan of uh, and personal friend of. Um, and at that time, when I was doing that painting, I just almost nonstop listened to all Robert Glasper music. Or, you know, if I was working on a painting of Donny Hathaway, who's another musician, I listened to, like, all Donny Hathaway music. Um, there was a painting I did of kind of like a, a cyber mercenary type of guy, and for that, I listened to, like, a lot of Daft Punk. And uh, so I, whether or not it actually does anything, you know, your answer is is as good as mine, um, but it definitely helps for me to sort of get me in that that headspace because I am, uh, you know, I, I love music and it, it really does affect me and my mood and my emotions and things like that. So, uh, like Torn, I'm always listening to music and and I do like to try and find music that is consistent with what I'm working on. That actually reminded me of. Uh something I was working on that I did something similar to what you said. 
Let me see if I can actually find it. I'll just throw something out there real quick while we're on the topic of uh, paintings of musicians. Hey! Michael McDonald? Hey, this is Michael McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, if I have to listen to Yamo be there one more time, I'm going to Yamo burn this door to the ground. Hey, Yamo don't want to hear you talk like that. <laughs> we have uh, we have another uh, question, but Aaron, if you want to hit the music question first, uh, I like music a lot. It's I usually always have music playing really really loud, and as far as what I like, I think I have a pretty eclectic taste. I like a lot of different stuff. I think I think more than anything else, I really like Daryl Hall. I know that's kind of a nerdy thing to say, but uh, Daryl Hall Darryl. from Hall and Oates. Uh, oh, okay. I'm yeah. um, I like I like a lot of retro music. I think like anything after the year 2000, I don't don't really have that much interest in. So like no. 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s. <laughs> I like to try to find stuff that's disappearing rather than you know whatever's out there now. Um, New Jack Swing, I'm kind of into like that 90s, like you know. Uh, Bobby Brown and that, that I don't know for some reason that's like really nostalgic to me just all those instruments that are in those in that particular <laughs> style it's like, yeah. it's like it's like super 90s and it just gives me a good feeling um, I like I like Motown a lot like a lot of old 60s stuff so music's definitely something it's like a companion when I'm drawing like I gotta have it because otherwise complete silence is like it's distracting <laughs> yeah I'm trying to do you want to? We have a new question, and I'm I'm in the process of pulling. Yeah. Something. Did you want to? Do you want to pull up that thing, Torin? Yeah, I'm, it's huge. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to open. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it, it just reminded me when Mike said that uh, he uh, he likes to listen to like you know the subject that he's painting, mm -hmm. and I remember I did this uh, little experiment. I painted the uh, the Wu Tang Clan, and oh, I, I love that piece you did. I painted all nine members. And I was like, I'm not going to listen to anything but the Wu-Tang Clan while I paint this. And I didn't realize it was going to take me over 100 hours. To <laughs> <laughs> so so I got a good week or more of nothing but the Wu-Tang Clan just over and over again. And they have like nice. 40 albums between all the individual members. And I listened to every one of them at least twice. That's awesome. I actually found it. Probably got it pulled up. So yeah, I love that piece you did. The viewers can see what I'm talking about here. Let's see. See that pop up yet? Nope. Just black screen. You broke it. You broke it, Torrent. There we go. There we go. That's nice. That's so awesome. It's cool that the different scales of the heads too, and then they all kind of fit in there. Like they f they fill all of the negative space. You've got uh, this one, and I remember you did a Breaking Bad collage, and the two of those are like on a whole other level, and are just super super impressive. The Wu Tang thing might actually be my favorite painting that I've ever done, honestly. Yeah. Even though I listen to so much awesome. of their music that it like changed my personality. I've been slaughtered for two days. <laughs> yeah, I love the composition. Uh, it's just that's an awesome piece. You can buy that as a poster. Are you doing prints for this? Yeah, I actually have prints for this. All right, those of you who are watching, get it while it's out there. I think yeah, I'm I have a too. couple left. I didn't sell all of them, so please feel free to contact me and get you a Wu-Tang print. How can they contact you? Uh, you can email me. It's tornthomas278 at gmail.com. Sweet. Um, yeah, you, right, could, uh... you could just look up You could look up any of us, too, on Google if, if you don't want to go to these addresses. You could just put in our names and Google, and we'll all come you up. You put in my first name, and I'm pretty sure you'll find me. There aren't a yeah. lot of torns around. Um, yeah, let's let's hit this, this next question, and then we should probably wrap up Relatively yeah. soon. Yeah. But, uh, um, what is so, this questioner? Yeah, our question is from Osmel Acosta. Have you guys ever tried character animation? I find that learning how to draw and paint first before heading to animation will prepare you further along. Absolutely. Um, 
on, on, on both points. I, I have done a little bit of animation, barely enough for me to even say that I did it. Um, you know, I, I did a little bit of flash in college. I, I went to college for digital media, which is kind of vague, but what that did offer me was, you know, I got to put my hands in, uh, like, 2D animation with flash. I did some 3D animation. I uh, did a lot of fine arts type of stuff. Uh, and since college, I've gotten a lot more, obviously, into digital painting and stuff like that. And uh, I actually queued up a little flash animation <laughs> that I did in college. Uh, point being, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculously bad. And knowing now what I know about anatomy and, and things like that, I know that it would be on another level. But enjoy. Can you guys... Let's get my screen share up and let me know if you can see this. It's about to get wild. Do you see? Mm, looks blank. Oh, here it goes. Yeah. I see it. Yeah? All right. Let's see if we can get... I don't know if we can get audio on here. We're on new grounds. I haven't been there in a long time. Are you ready? Let me see if I can zoom in on this guy. How do I... Can you do full screen? We can hit the lights. There you go. That was working. You hear the audio? No. Not to hear the audio. I think if you maybe if you unplug your headphones, you might be able to hear it. It might make audio. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> 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 Check out the background too. <laughs> the non backgrounds. Huh? Wait for the big reveal. Here it comes. Oh, it's me. <laughs> it's long. All right, let me plug back in here. <laughs> Yours is so much better than mine from college. <laughs> I have the video. There's no way in hell I'm gonna show it. <laughs> <laughs> Point being, you know, the things that things that I know now. Uh, one about I, I would probably put some type of a background in instead of just like a gray gradient. Um, you know, the things I know now about lighting and composition and anatomy and all that fun stuff. Yes, to answer your question would make a huge difference when it comes to animation. Because animation, it's basically, you know, by nature, it's moving pictures, moving images. So if the images themselves are not strong, regardless of how smooth, you know, your or how great your animation skills are, if the drawing falls flat, the animation doesn't stand a chance. Very true. Unless you're like me and what you're animating is a seven-foot-tall gallon of Robert Drank that is like Ooh. a ghetto Kool-Aid man. <laughs> it had a gold grill. Oh, that's I, think, I think that, too, like, animation has changed a lot because now it's all, like, flash where everything kind of just rotates on an axis, whereas before it was a lot more necessary, I think, to know how to draw it in, in, like, the Disney days because they would draw everything in, like, primitive shapes, you know. Goofy would be just, like, a bunch of balls connected with sticks He'd animate. They do all the movement, all the movements, and everything. And then somebody would go over that and actually make it look like goofy and add color. So, those fundamental principles of being able to draw—that's the framework for being able to animate. And they're really both. They're kind of essential. I don't. I don't. I'm sure there's people who are animators who don't draw and vice versa. But I think personally, for me, it's it's important to be able to know how to do both. Otherwise, I don't think I'd be able to do it. And take this with a grain of salt because you're talking to three non-animators. <laughs> I just want to show some... I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's actually kind of an adult... Um, it's not like pornographic or anything, but it's kind of adult humor. Something I made back, back in the Flash days. If, if you're familiar with the Macho Man Randy Savage, you might... Oh, like, yeah. Who is like, not? Oh, I know. So let's see here if we can... Oh, yeah! <laughs> so as... Me and my cousin had this idea to make these like Macho Man Randy Savage cartoons, um, but then it kind of we kind of started to realize that we wouldn't be able to make any money off of that because we don't we don't own Macho Man. So this is kind of an episode where like he's he's waking up in the middle of this like alien spacecraft or something, and he doesn't know what's going on. I love this already. 
it's just like the animation is like like his toes are like not long enough, and it's just it's good, but it's bad at the same time. It's good, bad. It's yeah. fantastic. Oh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> Macho Madness, sky's the limit. Ooh, yeah. This is so good. Hitting my YouTube debut. And he's like, what's going on here? What are you doing to me? This might be a video you want to, like, revisit. Like, this might be yeah. a really good idea. <laughs> Where am I? I mean, <laughs> I mean, Macho Man's going to the Hall of Fame. Okay, here's, here's where the action starts. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> wait, wait, wait for it. <laughs> this, this is on YouTube, but I, I never really wanted to make it. This is like the greatest glasses. thing I've this ever is, seen. There's 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 voice narration too with all the oh, God. voices. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That might be one of the greatest things I've ever seen. <laughs> it's it's almost over. I, I I didn't really have a plot for it, so it kind of just ends. It doesn't really need I one. Don't think you need one. So so basically like he realizes he didn't even know how to drive a car or fly a spaceship, so how's he gonna get back home? And oh then, no! <laughs> and then all of a sudden, behind him, wait for it. Owen Hart appears. Oh um, no! And then it's over. Maybe right so. Was this while he was still with us? Yeah. Oh. No, actually, no. This is after he died. So. Oh, okay. So he comes from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Owen Hart to the rescue. I think um, I'm gonna paint Macho Man now. Like that just yeah. <laughs> completely inspired me to paint Macho Man in seven. <laughs> That's going on the list. Oh my did you god! Guys, uh, did you guys ever see that that Skyrim mod where all the dragons were Macho Man? No. I saw the Left 4 Dead one though, where all the zombies were Macho oh, Man. Yeah, you guys gotta look that up. You gotta look that up. I, I don't have a link, but on at your own at your leisure. Look that up. It's hilarious. So all the the dragons are textured as Macho Man, and they got the glasses and the hats, but they're still like <laughs> awkward like dragons. And instead of like doing dragon noises, they're all doing Macho Man noise. And fire's coming out. And it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Nice. That's awesome. On that note. Uh, yeah. yeah, we well, it's a good thing we had that on our list of talking points. So it was like, <laughs> first digital paintings, uh, how did you get started as an artist, and then how do you feel about the Macho Man Randy Savage? <laughs> and, and or the Every Macho Kid. Every video yeah, we nice. can talk a little bit about the Macho Man. Yeah. Oh, God. And just um, regular wrestling. Back in the my, day. Back in the day wrestling. Yeah, back when it used to be good. Back when men were men. Yeah. <laughs> they wore neon and... Yep. <laughs> Tassels. Yep. <laughs> that's why it lends. That's why it lends so well to a cartoon because you're just <laughs> like anything you could make up about them probably actually happened. So I'm seriously painting the Macho Man now. I can't, <laughs> can't wait to see it. It's going down. There's there's a really good uh, photo of my phone where he's like he's like sitting on a dock like off to the side like contemplating his future and there's like a sunset behind him and it's like it's, like super dramatic. <laughs> If you can find that one, that, that's a good one. It's got, like, the ski goggles on during the <laughs> summer. All right, Rutz. You got, uh, you got yeah. anything else for us? Uh, I think we covered all of our talking points, and we got some nice questions from our viewers. And we did. I'm surprised. We, we all appreciate that. We didn't even and, make those up. Those, those yeah. actually happened. <laughs> um, and I think we're going to try to do more of these, you know, when we can, and I hope that you'll join us when we do. You can find all of us uh, uh, by looking at our little... Tag things here. We have our websites. If you just we only have one line here, so if there are any other sites you want to plug, now's the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe we can each take a turn, kind of shamelessly promoting ourselves. How about you go first? Me? Yeah. Okay. Um. So on my little status, the lower third here, it's got my Facebook, Facebook.com/slash Mike Meth Artist. Um. Of all my social media things, that's probably the one I, I'm most active on. Uh. I'm on Instagram too. Oh geez, uh, I think it's was it Mike underscore Meth or it might be Mike Meth Artist. Hang on, 
uh, Mike underscore mess. Yes. Instagram.com slash Mike underscore mess on uh, Twitter. I'm at Mike underscore meth. Uh, my personal website, MikeMeth.net. Not to be confused with MikeMeth.com. That's some other guy and he's on a site up. Um, so MikeMeth.net. Uh, and that will also link you to my online education site, which is MikeMethEducation.com, where I teach online digital painting classes. And that's all I got. Torn. All right. Uh, of course, you know, the lower third, TorrenThomasArt.blogspot.com. That is my blog. Follow that. Look around. Uh, see Facebook. I'm always on Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com slash TorrenThomas. Uh, I'm on Twitter and IG at Torn278. Uh, follow and do whatever you need to do. Clearly, I haven't been on Instagram long enough because I still call it Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I got my <laughs> my YouTube thing here on uh, my lower third, youtube.com slash Aaron Rutten. You could really, probably just search Google for Aaron Rutten and you're going to get all kinds of crap because I've pretty yeah, much, I've, I've thoroughly saturated the internet, so um, <laughs> if you're interested. Although, the, if you're going to look for something, I know there's a lot of stuff out there, but my YouTube channel has a ton of free digital art videos and tutorials. Um, there's, you know, stuff like this that we do with the Hangouts and all kinds of cool stuff to look at, so check that out. Click the subscribe button if you want to get updates when I release new content. And you can also go to my website, www.aaronrutten.com, and there's all kinds of stuff there, like my artwork and whatnot. So I think, is it, does that conclude our session for today? I think Anybody that's going to conclude. Else? I think we're concluded. Okay. Well, Anything thanks, else? Everybody. Last parting words from anybody? Thanks for <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody, all, all 5,000 of you. <laughs> <laughs> just just tell us. Tell 10,000 of your friends to watch the next one. It'll be great. Thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we hope to see you again. Take care, guys. Later. Oh, yeah. Now you have to stop.